Hello, my name is Vislav. On YouTube there are plenty of videos on the radius of curvature, an escalating circle, but most of them are from a purely mathematical perspective. In this series of recordings you're gonna learn how to combine your mathematical understanding of curvature with its applications in physics. You will find it useful to know differential geometry, especially when solving kinematics problems. Let's start with some simple intuitions from math perspective. We have a polynomial here. Let's take some point on it. Of course there is a tangent line at this point, but the tangent has zero curvature and is therefore not a good indication of curvature of the polynomial. So we are looking for a circle whose shape best matches the polynomial around this point. For now, to put it colloquially, if an ant was walking close to this point, it would not be able to distinguish whether it was walking around a circle or a polynomial. If we now move our point to the left, the circle of best fit increases its radius. In this video we are gonna learn how to localize the center of that circle and measure its radius. To gain intuition, let's move our point to the right and see how the radius of the circle changes. Here we encounter a place where the curve flattens out, so the radius of the circle would have to be infinite. And then we go right. We define the curvature of a curve simply as the inverse of the radius of the circle. Let's see how it changes as we travel around this polynomial. Passes through zero. This brings us to an example point. What is useful in kinematics is to see how the polynomial behaves with the respect to this circle. To the left of the white point, our polynomial extends outside the circle, while on the right side, the nearest piece of the polynomial is in the inner region bounded by this circle. This is due to the fact that to the right of the white point, the curvature increases and to the left it decreases. When we get to the point where the curvature reaches a local maximum of 1.85, we notice that both on the left and on the right, the polynomial is on the outside of the circle. This means that the curvature decreases both on the right and on the left. Let's move slightly the point and let's consider this situation for a moment from a physical point of view. Because a very interesting kinematic question arises here. Let's assume that we would now like to set material points in motion along these curves. In the first situation we consider a blue point which starting from here travels along this polynomial. But a second situation is also possible. When the red point, starting from the same place, reaches the white point and at this point chooses to continue moving in a circle. And the question is how at this point Colloquially speaking, the decision is made whether to continue moving along this polynomial or around the circle. 
we will return to this question in the next video and before that we need a more strictly geometric understanding of how a curvature circle is formed. In particular, let's first see how to determine the center of a curvature circle. Let's choose a certain point P0 on our polynomial where we want to measure the local curvature. At this point we can draw a tangent line and a line perpendicular to it which we call the normal line. Only the second straight line will be useful to us. Then we take some neighboring point P1, it doesn't matter which side of point P0. Then we create a tangent line and a normal line. We leave only the normal lines for further construction. Since our polynomial between these points is bent, these two normal lines intersect at some point. We mark in, in red. And we perform a simple mental operation. We want to see what happens when point P1 approaches point P0. We mean approaching in the sense of limit, i.e. point P1 is arbitrarily close to point P0, but never reaches it. We then have a very interesting situation. Even though these lines get closer to each other, they don't become parallel. And our red points tend to a certain limit red point, which we can define as the center of curvature of the polynomial at point P0. And we can draw a curvature circle. In principle, one could say that the radius of curvature is the radius of this circle, but such a definition would be of little use because it wouldn't show directly how to find this radius. To do this, let's go back to some neighboring point P1 that is close to point P0. The intersection point of the normal lines has moved back. Let's imagine a circle with its center at the point of intersection of the normals, a circle that passes through points P0 and P1. So it is a circle other than the curvature one. We leave this smaller circle alone in the drawing. And now the important idea, the length of the arc of the polynomial between points P0 and P1 approximately corresponds to the length of the arc of this red circle between these points. This is the case from a mathematical point of view. However, from the physical side, movement along a piece of this polynomial arc can be temporarily treated as movement around such a red circle, i.e. as a momentary rotation. Let's mark the angle of this rotation, and in mathematics it's the angle between normal lines. We can calculate the radius of the red circle by dividing the arc length by the angle in radians. And now we follow what happens in the limit when the value of this angle approaches zero. Then we get the radius of the osculating circle as the limit of delta s over delta phi as delta phi approaches zero. The expression delta s over delta phi corresponds to the length of this green segment. When the delta phi angle approaches zero, the radius lengthens. And reaches the limiting radius, which is defined as the radius of curvature we wanted. 
From this recipe, detailed formulas can be derived for the radius of curvature of the function f of x or for a parametric curve. You can easily find them using magical search engines. However, we focus on understanding where these patterns come from and on practical applications. Therefore, in the next video in this series, we will talk about the role of curvature in kinematics and what makes a material point in motion stay on a given curve. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.